tail dog all along And the worst part is I perk up when I catch a glimpse of that damn notification What's the relations we're living in a world full of hatred well, kissing my last Another tutorial This one is gonna be how to get a stamp effect similar to this And um, I just wanna say thanks to everybody who subscribed It's quite weird having subscribers after having none And also hardly uploading but I am trying not to do as many how-to tutorials, however I will do how-to tutorials if it's like basically on something that I already do and I'm like well, you know, I could help someone else. So for example, I use this text effect on a lot of, uh, a lot of my painting work and a lot of descriptive things like titles and stuff just because it adds some character and some personality to the type and uh, yeah, let's get into Photoshop and let's get on with it. What you want to do is create a new document. I'm going to create mine at an A4 size and the reason why I've done it at this size and at 300 ppi is because 300 ppi is like the standard print size if you ever wanted to print this up and down scaling this type of effect it doesn't really matter however you know you always want to keep it concise and consistent so let's go to t let's type in our thing now i'm gonna go for stamp duty you can um change the uh font to anything you like and it doesn't really matter because we can edit and change it to a smart object anyway if you click off it click back on right click and then go convert to smart object what that means you can go in and edit this and if you want to increase the canvas size you can play with it a bit more you just go into here and change it so you have more space. Right, now we have the type here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to keep mine around 14 because I don't want it to be too, I'm, I don't want it to be too impactful. I want mine to be quite subtle because when we go to the adjustments and throw in a threshold right now, look what it does. So the higher you increase it, the more stamp like it is. But then if you go back to Gaussian blur, if you up this, yeah. <laughs> So it's basically playing with the blur right now. I'm gonna keep mine there. I like it like that. You can, you know, play with it as much as you want. The third step is to go to filter, distort, and then ripple. This create little ripples and little distortion around the edges. And if you keep it too high, it won't look very realistic. So I'm gonna keep it quite low. This is what I got so far. Now, you can either end the tutorial here and then skip to the part where I teach you how to export it as a, a PNG, or we could do this thing called a displacement map which creates a unique type of texture to it. So I created one recently called Scratch PSD or whatever, you know what I mean? What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna import a texture and I've done this using Unsplash. I'll link the uh, I'll link the Unsplash image I use, which is this one below. But you can type in Unsplash like grunge texture or like scratch texture or whatever and you can find your own. Oop, my Mac's gonna go to sleep. <laughs> From this, I did a little bit of editing, but I just made it a little bit more brighter so the contrasts are different. So I have this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this I'm going to go to filter, distort, and displace. And now I'm just going to click on my scratch Photoshop document. And you see what it does? It takes the form like a clipping mask of the document I, I submitted. Now it looks quite cool, it's quite consistent. I will now show you how to turn it into a transparent PNG. Because obviously if you export this, like, and turn this off, yeah. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select everything we have, all this stuff, both our things. I'm going to throw them in a folder. We're going to want to create a solid color now on top as black. Then we're going to want to hide the color. Then we're going to go to select color range. Shadows. Make sure everything's at zero. Select OK. It's only going to select the dark, darker parts. And then what you're going to want to do is turn off the folders. Go to here. Command I. Click off of it. Deselect. Command I again. And then re reapply Command I. So you basically invert, then deselect, then invert again. And deselect, I just press Command D if you didn't know how to do it. Now we have a... Uh, now we have our little uh -ba -da -ba. so yeah pretty cool right guys you can do what you want with this the problem is you're gonna have to always invert it back and forth to reapply the the transparency because if you do go into editing and then go into your smart object and change what the type says you'll then have to go create a solid color again however you know it takes about three seconds you can just look up this tutorial to redo it so yeah thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys learned something. I know this was quick, but I, I didn't want to waste anyone's time. Please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time for a bit of painting. Because like I said, these how-to tutorials aren't really my thing. The next upload I got is actually a podcast, which will be quite strange. But you guys can see what I think, and it yeah, should be good. Thank you guys. It's been Dakota, Swan, or Two-Tailed Dog. Have a blessed day. Two-Two-Two's.